Hi, Adventure Allen here. I've been backpacking for over 50 years, and I've been ultralight backpacking for the last 20 of those, and I'd like to share my experience with you. Today, we're going to talk about my 9-pound, full-comfort, lightweight gear list, which I believe is the best backpacking gear on the market, not only for me, but also for you. It's simple, it's easy to use, it's light, and it will keep you safe warm and comfortable so you don't have to worry about your well-being. But probably the most important thing about this gear is that it's transformative. It makes backpacking fun again. It's just like walking in your local park as opposed to trudging down the trail with this 50 or 45 pound pack burdening down your life. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at all this great backpacking gear. Okay, we're here, um, so let's take a look at all this great gear. Um, sort of spread it out on this blanket here so you can get a good overview of what we're looking at. But one of the first things you can look at is, even though all this gear only weighs nine pounds, you have everything you need. You have high quality, warm sleeping bag, a, a two person super solid tent, um, a large, capacity backpack with a good frame, lots of warm clothing, um, rainwear. This is a super warm down jacket. You've got a nice cook set. You've got emergency comm gear. You've got a USB battery. You've got hydration, water purification, maps and navigation, first aid kit, repair kit. You got the works here, but you don't have the weight. Okay, first up is my Hyperlite Southwest 3400 pack. Um, this pack's been all over the world with me, this exact pack. It's been North of the Arctic Circle in Alaska. It's been down to Patagonia. It's been technical canyoneering in Utah. It's done trails in the Sierras and the Rockies. It's my one pack does it all. It's got a huge volume if I need it. It doesn't have volume if I don't. Um, if I combine it with these Dyneema waterproof stuff sacks. Uh, all my gear stays dry. I don't need to use a rain cover. I don't know how to do pack my pack differently whether it's raining or not. It's got these nice durable solid fabric pockets which unlike mesh they don't tear if you go through brush or scrape against granite and it's got nice hip belt pockets. I've got a couple shoulder pockets on this thing. Um, it's got enough pockets that I can get almost everything I need out of the day without ever having to go into the main body of the pack, which is super good. So moving on here, um, we have my hammock gear burrow uh, ultralight down quilt. As you can see, this is just hugely puffy and warm. It's kind of like the Michelin Man version of a sleeping bag, but it's, it's super light and best. It's not, it's not all that expensive. It's about half the cost of a uh, down sleeping bag in it and it weighs a lot less. Um, underneath the quilt I have this uh, Thermarest um, Neo Airslite women's pad. This is the women's but all the men I know use it too. It's, it's warmer than the men's pad um, at about the same weight which is a super it's advantage if things get really cold. Um, and this is my pillow here. It's a stuff sack that when you stuff it this way, it's nice and nappy, which is against your head. And my down jackets in here, this is a very warm down jacket. Um, it doesn't weigh very much. So this is uh, the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Dirigo 2 Tent. It's been on the market about six months. I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, it is super strong. I am actually leaning against this tent, um, but it only weighs 1.8 pounds. It weighs less than almost all two-person tents on the market. But if you open this tent up and look inside, it's, it's huge inside. It's 34 square feet in here, which is about 25 or 30 percent larger than most two-person tents. Um, but whether you want to go solo 
or two person, you can kind of have your cake and eat it too because at 1.8 pounds, this tent can do both. All right, so let's go through the gear and, and this corner of the mat. Um, start. We'll just sort of work our way from the back towards the front. Um, we have the Sawyer Squeeze water filtration system. I actually like the full size squeeze. I find that the smaller Sawyers, like the Mini, they don't have enough flow rate in there. They tend to clog. It's not worth saving an ounce. Um, I like these bladders more than smart water bottles um, because I can collapse them and get them out of the way. My normal mode for hydration is to drink at the source. I might carry a half a liter or a liter, but a lot of times I don't. That gives me the option of just folding these up and putting them out of the way. Um, for cooking, I have this Trail Designs uh, Caldera system. It's uh, basically an alcohol version uh, that works kind of like a jet boil stove. There is uh, this cone which works as a heat exchanger to protect this uh, alcohol stove. Keeps all the heat focused around the pot, super efficient, super light, um, weighs about half of what a jet boil does. I have two fuel containers. This uh, four ounce Boston round bottle will get me about five days, five, six days worth of uh, fuel this um, about eight or ten days in, in this larger eight ounce um, dual chamber bottle that actually helps me measure fuel. Ignition, just a standard Bic lighter. I've got this light sub two ounce titanium mug so I can eat my breakfast and have my coffee at the same time. Nice big shovel titanium spoon. Um, moving over to here um, in keeping with leave no trace. I've got this uh, Deuce of Spades potty trowel. Uh, I've got some bum wad and some alcohol hand sterilizer. Um, moving back over to here, keeping with sort of the hygiene, I've got uh, toothpaste, full size toothbrush, cutting it in half makes no sense. Uh, I've got this Picaridin insect repellent. Um, it works way better than DEET, small half ounce bottle. Um, some sunscreen, again, um, I, I tend to use clothing for sun protection, so I don't use a lot of sunscreen. This probably lasts me half a year. Lip balm, earplugs, a couple extra water bottle caps. Moving forward here, um, I've got a, a minimal first aid kit, but it works. Uh, I've got a small repair kit here. Um, Moving on to some, some more important stuff for navigation. I've got this um, Sunto M3. Um, this is a first rate compass with decalation adjustment. I have these custom maps I printed that it's in a waterproof gallon Ziploc baggie. Um, but more often than not, what I use to navigate um, is my iPhone. Um, I use it with Gaia GPS and I do all my routes and waypoints and I have four or five different map layers and that's my that's my primary navigation tool the map is more for note taking or getting big pictures or in case the phone fails which it never has um, I like these just light inexpensive like 12 15 dollar cases off of Amazon and then I just use this uh, polyethylene zip baggie um, I've taken my iPhone down the uh, Grand Canyon, in that case it, it works fine. Um, for emergency comm, I have this Garmin, in, um, Garmin InReach Mini. Um, I think it's the neatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, when I'm guiding, uh, I use this all the time. It's uh, super important for safety. So I have uh, two flavors of headlamp here. Um, this Black Diamond Spotlight, which hits the sweet spot between um, weight and being able to hike on trails and having a fairly long battery life. Um, but if I'm in the middle of the summer and I, um, a lot of times I'll just take this uh, Fenix LOD2 um, little um, single AAA LED flashlight, uh, amazing. It's got a little clip I can clip onto my hat brim and it turns into a headlamp. Given that we have so much electronics backpacking, um, it is what it is. Um, you do need a backup USB battery. This Jackery Bolt is, is one of the nicest. Um, 6,400 milliamp hours um, delivers a super fast charger. What I like about this is it's got both a USB 
and a lightning cable built into it so you can't lose the cables and you don't need to buy an extra cable. Um, pretty much charge anything in your kit. Um, moving over even a little farther here, um, I've got a nice pair of Zenni sunglasses. You order them online, they come in about three weeks, but this is a super nice pair of prescription sunglass, sunglasses, less than $50. Um, for cutting things, I've got two options here. Uh, these four or five dollar um, school scissors um, work great for most anything you want to cut and they are airplane carry-on friendly which means I can do a trip carry-on and not have to buy a knife or check a knife at the end of the trip. Um, if I do need a knife, um, and I do when I'm guiding with clients and I need to cut up cheese and do meal prep and stuff like this, this Gerber LST is about an ounce, super durable, and it'll pretty much cut anything you want. I don't really see a need to carry a knife much larger than that. So, and most of that fits into this ditty bag here. I just sort of have it spread out here for your convenience, but pretty much everything you see spread out here that I was talking about fits in this small bag. This rain jacket here and these rain pants together weigh less than 10 ounces. They're, they're almost a half a pound together. This is an Outdoor Research Helium 2 rain jacket. It's about six ounces. It's got one pocket on it. It's got a zipper. It, it does the job. Again, this is a jacket that I've taken, not this particular one, but a jacket I've taken all over the world. Um, this is a pair of Z-Packs uh, Vertice rain pants. They're under four ounces. I think they're about three, 3.8 ounces. Um, these still have mud on them from going out on the Southern Patagonia ice shelf um, this January. Um, I pretty much go everywhere with them. They've, they've held up well. Um, they've even been to Alaska, so I'm super happy with them. For a mid-layer, I like this uh, White Sierra BAZ um, 100 weight fleece shirt. You can get it for around 20 bucks on Amazon. You can find the link on my site. Uh, this is pretty much the active wear that I wear during the day when I'm moving and it's cold. Um, the nice thing about this 100 weight fleece is that it's actually a little bit wind resistant. Um, and I find that I don't really need to even layer a wind shell over it to keep moving. Um, at the point that it's cold enough that um, I need to have a wind block, I can actually just layer this outdoor research jacket over it. Um, now, I don't know about you, but um, I have cold hands and feet, so I'm always trying to keep my hands and feet warm, um, especially my hands. So you'll see um, a fair amount of hand wear here. Um, these are the, the feet Dura gloves. I like this nice, um, bright, um, yellow night neon color because it makes it super easy to find. Gloves are one of those things you always end up leaving on a rock somewhere forgetting about and this makes it easy to keep track of them. Um, during the day more and more often I'm wearing these, these sun gloves. Um, I wore them all the time in Alaska just a few weeks ago. Uh, the other advantage is that they take a lot of wear and tear off of your hands. I got a lot fewer scrapes on my hands in Alaska wearing these gloves. So these are pretty much um, sun protection, scrape protection. I wear them kind of all the time. When it gets cold, I have these Mountain Laurel Designs um, Event Rain Mitts. They go over these Defeat gloves. Um, sometimes not even if it's raining, it's just it's a wind shell. That the two of these are astonishingly warm when paired together. Um, to keep the, my noggin warm, I actually uh, prefer a balaclava like this. Um, this is just a fleece balaclava. This is a mountain hardware one, but the brand is in particular. But it gives you protection all around your neck. And uh, it also is really nice if it's buggy and it's cold. This is pretty much uh, it's great head protection. I carry one extra pair of socks. These are dedicated sleep socks. Um, when I come into camp, I put these on to go to bed in and leave my wet, stinky socks outside the tent to dry. This is my uh, food bag. Nothing special. Uh, depends on the requirements of where I am. 
but I can do uh, I can do a hang with this if that's what the regs require. Um, if you have special bear regs and the ursac is allowed, um, this is my my next choice. Um, way lighter than a bear canister, um, way more easy to fit into your pack, and there's really not a lot of downside to this except that uh, some of the parks like Yosemite, Kings Quest, Kenya Canyon do not approve the earth sack and you're stuck with a rigid bear canister. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is the trail clothes that I would wear and this is super important. So one of the things I said is that I, I like body protection. I don't like to wear a lot of sunscreen. I do a lot of bushwhacking and, and off-trail travel. I like the skin protection that long sleeve and long uh, long sleeve shirts and long pants. So the first thing is this Rail Rider this Mojave Sun shirt. Um, this is a, a resurrection of an Echo Mesh shirt that was used during the, the eco races in the early aughts. It was one of my favorite shirts and they've, they've started making um, a slightly revised version of the shirt. I'm super excited. 50 SPF, nice ventilated side panels. Super simple, no buttons, one pocket, um, doesn't weigh a lot, doesn't heat you up. Um, to my mind, a, a near perfect shirt. Um, and uh, these are the Rail Riders Extreme Adventure pants. Again, these are pants that I would go to Patagonia out onto the southern ice shelf with me. They've been um, up in Alaska bushwhacking. Um, they hold up, they're not heavy. They're perfectly great for trail hiking on the JMT and the Sierras. What I like about them, um, while being light, they have the reinforced knees, they have a reinforced butt, they've got these ankle gathers so I don't need to use gaiters. Um, they've got tons of pockets. These pockets are super deep, nothing's falling out of that. Um, two zippered pockets on either side. And sort of like I was telling you about my backpack where I have all these pockets so I don't need to go into the backpack. These pants fill that role as well. Again, one of my goals is to try not to grab stuff out of packs or anywhere else. I want to have it easily at hand and these pants are a key element to that. Okay, pants down. Uh, this is a nice uh, versatile hat. Um, this is the Outdoor Research Sunrunner hat. And again, in keeping with the sun protection thing, I have a sun cape when I need it. Um, I can take it off when I don't need it. Um, it can just be a regular non-dorky ball cap. But if you spend a lot of time at high altitudes, um, I think that having sun protection for your neck and ears makes a lot of sense. Um, Moving down to my feet, maybe the most important thing we talk about backpacking are these um, Ultra Lone Peak trail running shoes. Pretty much the favorite of the ultralight and lightweight backpacking community. These shoes go everywhere. I go through talus, I go through snow with these shoes, mud, wading rivers in Alaska. These do it all. They hold up well. One of the things that I really like about these shoes is this very wide toe box, which gives my feet plenty of room when they tend to swell after the end of a 25 or 30 mile day. It's always in my forefoot and my toes that are the stuff that starts to hurt. And this gives lots of room for expansion. Uh, for socks, um, I got a couple socks I wear. Most of the time I, I wear these, these darn tough socks. I like the very thin, short, unpadded versions. I find the thin works better. I get fewer blisters. They're more comfortable. Um, they wash easier and they dry faster and absorb less water. Um, an alternate to the Darn Tough are these Smart Wool PhD socks, very similar to the, uh, the Darn Tough. They're a little easier to get a hold of at REI and some other places. Um, so finally, we're going to go and look at the trekking poles, which you haven't seen because they're holding up my tent but I'm going to pop one of them out of the tent here and bring it over here. And I think these are close to the best trekking poles on the market. Um, these are the Cascade Mountain Tech carbon fiber trekking poles. But unlike most fancy trekking poles, which cost well over $100, these are $45. And 
I have seen so many clients break so many expensive, lightweight trekking poles. These do not break. They do the job. So if there was one piece of gear here I might buy, this would be, this would be very high on the list. So this is last but not least. And finally, I, I forgot to mention something about, about tent stakes. And these are some tent stakes I really like. Um, these are these TNH tent stakes. You can buy them on Amazon. But you can see here they only have one notch. And this fin and this fin are both solid, making this head area much stronger. And where I find that most tent stakes fail is right in this notch area where you put the cord around and you put a shoe on it or you pound on it with a rock and it bends or snaps right here because all, every single side is notched. With two sides completely unnotched, this tent stake is far stronger and will last a lot longer. As you can see, this, this just isn't rocket science. It's, it's not complicated. Um, being light, uh, you have everything you need here. Nothing's confusing. It's easy to use. You'll be warm. You'll be safe. You'll be comfortable. You got a warm sleeping bag. You got a nice comfy pad. You got a big nice tent to sleep in. You've got warm clothing. You've got stuff to cook with. You've got safety communications gear. You have everything you need here. I know I rattled stuff off really quickly. It's a lot of stuff to assimilate. There were a lot of specs. There were um, a lot of names of stuff that you probably didn't get. Um, but not to worry, all of that stuff is on my website. There's a link below to my nine pound full comfort gear list. It's all the information you need to pack super light and make backpacking a crap load more fun. So wishing you a great year checking. This is Adventure Allen signing out.